Uh, let's go elsewhere. We cross the Atlantic. That moment of history, Donald Trump becoming the first US president to go on trial. Here's one supporter outside the courtroom in New York. I will fight for this man till the day I die. And if they put him in jail, there are going to be millions of Americans like me that are going to grab our guns and have a civil war. Oh, dear Lord, that's what you want to hear, isn't it, this time? We're off to the United States where a former, pro pro former president made history. No, you know it's not going to be Clinton. It's not going to be Obama. It's going to be... This is political persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. It's an assault on America. And that's why I'm very proud to be here. Donald Trump, the first former US president to stand a criminal trial. Protesters on both sides were out in force, outside on the streets. Here's a little of what some of the pro-Trump camp had to say about his legal problems. They're uh, weaponizing the criminal justice system, system against their political enemies, and it's not right. I will fight for this man till the day I die. And if they put him in jail, there are going to be millions of Americans like me that are going to grab our guns and have a civil war. To Deborah Blum, who's an attorney based in New York. Uh, better just start off, Deborah. Remind the listeners, why do we find a former president in a Manhattan courtroom? Good morning. Well, good morning. You certainly teed that one up well. I mean, actually, I think he shouldn't even be in the court round, courtroom because the case stands on leaky, murky, leaky, <laughs> murky legal grounds. <laughs> and uh, federal election violations can't be tried in state court. And that's the basis for the felony charges. He is charged with falsifying business records and in doing so, trying to conceal another crime, the uh, agreement to unlawfully influence the outcome of the 2016 election. So in my opinion, this case should not be going forward in state court, which is where the case is going forward. And I'm also scared to actually have to go to court there because mm. the scene outside of the courthouse is crazy right now. How long is the trial likely to last, Deborah? So it was anticipated to last six or more weeks. It could even go into June. It's four days each week. And jury selection might take two weeks, which is a very <laughs> long time. I was about to ask you... Uh... How do you select a jury in a case such as this? What sort of questions are asked of potential jurors? So there's actually a, a, a juror questionnaire that was fought over by both sides and approved by the judge. And it's approximately 42 questions that each of the individual jurors will be asked. Today, jury selection started and more than half of the people, approximately 100, raised their hands and said they couldn't be impartial. And to be a juror, you have to be able to be impartial. Lastly, and you're a lawyer, you're an attorney, how do you prove impartiality? It's impossible, isn't it? I think in this case, it's definitely impossible. New York City is not a good place for <laughs> Donald Trump to begin with. <laughs> and... No matter your feelings against him, the jurors have to be able to look at each and every element of each and every element uh, uh, of the crime charge beyond a reasonable doubt, whether he committed it or not. And in New York City, you're going to have a really difficult time finding people that can do that. Obviously, the defense wants people who are Trumpers. But the prosecution, because of the questions, is are going to be able to eliminate people that are favorable to Trump. And the most that he can hope for is people who are going to be able to be fair and set aside who he is, their feelings towards him. And it's really unclear if we're going to be able to find those people.